Marga Albee, as all of you know. I served in the legislature in the assembly in the 90s. I served three terms, and I had the distinction among my Republican colleagues uh, of never voting for a tax increase. I'm the only Republican in this race who never voted to raise taxes. I actually kept my pledge when I was in the assembly for three terms. And not only did I keep my pledge not to raise taxes, I actually cut taxes. And we have trouble today. I know you all, the attendance here is reflective of that. People are paying attention to people running for office because we are in desperate times. And I will tell you that I think you need to send someone who is conservative, who is tough, and who is effective on your behalf to Sacramento in the State Senate. And I'm tired of what's going on in Sacramento, and I want to go back and make a difference. I did make a difference when I served there in the 90s. Let me tell you some of the things I did. I was part of the leadership. This has been a minority. We were minorities just like these guys are. Willie Brown was in charge when I was elected, and the, the Dems remained in charge through most of the time I was there. Nonetheless, I was part of the leadership that cut welfare benefits. We did welfare reform in the state of California. I'm the author of Megan's Law. When I you know what that is, it allows you to know what sexual predators move into your neighborhood. When I introduced that bill, the ACLU and the liberals said, this bill is dead on arrival. Guess what? We got it out. I was not there, but I can assure you I would have voted no as well. Um, I really am weary of Republicans that raise taxes. And all due respect to my friend Roger, we're buying that too often. Bush thought we had to go print money and bail out uh, the TARP bailout. I, I, I was ashamed of that, that Republicans are forgetting why we are Republican. We believe in limited government. We don't believe in taking more of your money. We actually believe in giving you back more of your money. I will not vote for taxes. And regardless of the calamity, we just saw what happened with the solution to raise taxes and build more government in this calamity. It's still upon us. So I can tell you, taxes will not be the answer for me. It will be cut regs, cut spending. Let business people do what they do best. Hire folks and get money into the economy, and then there'll be a plenty of money for everybody's program. I think that number one issue for the mountain people, the foothill people, and those that live down in Sacramento in the city is government that is ruling your lives instead of serving you. All of us in this room pretty much save a few of these young people probably are living on fixed incomes. You don't have an opportunity when government continues to add more and more burden on you to go out and get a raise or to make more money. Some of us are on fixed income here tonight. You've got to have a, a senator who will defend you and not bring more spending onto your door. The liberals always want more and more money, and they can find more and more problems to throw it at. In El Dorado Hills, the people here want to be left alone. They can take care of themselves. They want to chart their own destinies, whether they're 25 or 75. And they want government off their backs. And believe me, I do too. And that's what I would deliver as your senator. Just so I'm clear, I will not raise taxes. I wouldn't approve this budget. I think everybody ought to have some skin in the game. Not just the wealthy, not just the middle class, not just the poor. And the skin in the game that I'm talking about is that everybody ought to be able to work. And, those are the, and also the people that are, are living off the system and have learned to make it sort of a way of life to live off the system. They ought to have skin in the game and get jobs and produce tax revenue. Not more taxes than they pay, would pay now, but tax revenue. The other thing we ought to do is we ought to stop, instead of, they're always looking at finding more money out of more pockets. We ought to stop some of the things we're doing now, such as offering social programs to entice people to come across our border illegally and use our resources and get free health care and get welfare and get free schooling when they're not here legally. That's one of the ways we can turn this budget situation around. I mean. It's very important that we start thinking reasonably. There's a mentality down in Sacramento that says, we need money 
you need to give us more money, rather than saying, we're going to find a way to cut spending. I grew up in this area, and I remember as a kid, uh, when my parents divorced, my aunts and my uncles used to talk about, Mary, you ought to my mom, you ought to go to work for the state. The pay's not that good, but the benefits are great. They never envisioned what we have today. That was a long time ago. I agree with Roger, we cannot sustain this. And working for the government in California, you can retire at 50 years old, at 50, and have lifetime benefits for you and your spouse. There's no way to sustain this. We must have reform. We've got to find a way to push it up, push retirement age up. I don't say beyond our 62, 64, but certainly not 50 years old with lifetime benefits. We can't handle that. So we did have some reforms in this budget. Uh, we'll see how that is going to work out, but we do need to reform how we do our retirements going forward. Help. I would not have supported AB 32, obviously, um, and I support AB, uh, the proposition that's on ballot 23 that rolls back uh, that that uh, those regulatory powers. Uh, so that's for the record. But there's even more that these people want to do. I think the radical environmental religion, and that's what it is, just don't want to clean our, our air to be pure. They want our water rights. They want to take water rights away from us, property rights away from us. They want to send our water to the ocean and feed the fishes and the salmon. So the, worries, the most worrisome part right now, to tell you the truth, is if the polling is not good, it looks like Prop 23 will likely not get there in November unless we get out there and work very hard for it. We also have something before us this November that's a great concern, and that's Prop 25 that lets the legislature pass taxes with a simple majority. So you could just see if we where this is going. It is time to stop these things somehow. And you need tough people to be there to fight this sort of policy making. Well, I think you can hear tonight, I have a lot of passion, I have a lot of fire. Uh, I am a blessed person. I am grateful for the life that I've been able to live. But my life wasn't always a nice life that it is today. I'm a unique Republican. I was a welfare mom. And my defining moment was when a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan became governor of this state. And in a few months, he cut my benefits. I didn't like him very much then, but I love him today because it was conservative policy, constitutional policy, and a governor's tough love that took me from the poorhouse to the state house, where I was able to apply all those things I had learned coming off the welfare line, starting a business, raising a family, that I lived in real life, and I brought that to the state assembly. I want to go back and do it again. It is time for freedom fighters. I feel like I'm a Green Beret. I was very, very effective when I served in Sacramento. It's one thing to say, I introduced this bill, I introduced that bill, but you know what? Most of the Republican bills fail because they don't have the numbers to pass them. I didn't have the numbers to pass them, but I still passed great conservative legislation because I was effective. I was effective at crossing the aisle and getting the Democrats to come over and join me and not giving up principle. It's one thing to cross and come over and say, I'm going to go up on taxes. I never did that. I stood strong. And you know what? You need people that are strong today for you. And it's time that we have someone like me serving in Sacramento. And in this race, the, the answer for this race, the best man for this race, in my mind, is the only woman on the ballot. And that's me. And I would be honored to have your vote. Thank you very much.